Welcome back, Newtons, to episode two of Nutanix Community Edition. This is your host, Brendan Quinn, asking you not to forget about those like and subscribe buttons and reminding you to please comment below about any topics you'd like to see me cover in the future. In our last episode, we installed a single node Nutanix Community Edition cluster on Scully, my Gen 6 Intel Nook. In this episode, we are going to log into the Prism Element UI, prepare the environment for workloads, and build our very first virtual machine. In order to complete this lab, you will need the environmental cheat sheet and VertIO driver ISO referenced in episode one, as well as a Windows Server or Windows Desktop ISO. If you do not have access to Windows ISOs, you can get a 180 day free trial from Microsoft.com. The link is in the description. As always, any technical issues you run into while trying to follow along with this video, please navigate on over to the next community page and start a thread. A member of this wonderful community will help you on your journey. Alrighty, let's get started. In order to log in uh, to your Nutanix Community Edition cluster, you will need the IP address of your CVM. Open your favorite browser and navigate to CVM IP. This will open an unsecured connection over HTTPS and you will need to manually accept the connection. Once you have done that, the Nutanix Prism login page will appear. Please use the default username and password from the environmental cheat sheet to log in. You'll be asked to create a new password for this cluster. Once you have changed your password, you'll be asked to verify it by logging in. At this time, you will be asked to provide your .next user credentials from the Nutanix Next community. Once those credentials have been provided, you will be logged into the Prism UI. This is where all of your management and day-to-day -day operations will take place. Let me just zoom in a little bit here so you all can see uh, a little bit better. You can tell that it's Community Edition because of this nifty little CE up here in the corner. First, let's name our cluster. Then we can provide the cluster virtual IP address, iSCSI data services IP, which should all be documented in your environmental cheat sheet. You can all ignore this warning because we are not actually changing the iSCSI data services IP address, but rather just defining it for the first time. Virtual IP and iSCSI data services IPs will be used in more advanced configurations, but it's a great idea to set them on every cluster that you build so that you have them and you're in that habit. Now that we have our cluster named and a proper management IP is set for a community edition cluster, it's time to add a network for your virtual machines to run on. I know it sounds like it might be somehow involved or difficult, but I can assure you that if you have your cheat sheet filled out, you're almost done. Please follow me to the network configuration page by clicking the cog in the top right corner and scrolling down to network configurations. For the purposes of getting started today, we are going to check on the configuration of our name server, add an NTP server, and add our primary workload VLAN. All the information you need to get this done is in your environmental cheat sheet. First, let's click on name servers. You should see the IP of your DNS server from the cheat sheet. If you do not, Please add it now. Click on NTP servers on the left hand menu and type in the NTP server that you wish to use here. I will be using pool.ntp.org servers. I'm going to add two.pool.ntp.org. And let's move over to network configuration. On this page, you will click the blue link for create network and provide a name. I'm using my cluster name as a prefix, just one of my suggestions for good housekeeping. For VLAN ID, 
If you do not know what VLAN you are on, or do not have VLANs on your network, this value for you will likely be zero. However, in my environment, I am using VLAN 2, so I will set that ID here and click Save. All right, that's it for the networking piece. Perhaps in a future episode, we'll be able to get into more advanced networking. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see that. All right, let's pop on over to storage. I'm not going to go into great detail about our storage capabilities or architecture in this video. I'm just going to create a simple storage container for you to use for all of your workloads. Click the drop down and select storage. Navigate over to table view and click add storage container button in the top right corner. Again, I'm going to use my cluster name as a prefix for my primary container. Click save. All right, that's it. Now you have a logical storage volume for all of your clustered data. No LUNs, no RAID, no problems. All right. Now that we have our networking and storage configured for our environment, it's time to get some images into the image repository so that we can build our virtual workloads. If you have not already downloaded your Windows and VertIO ISO images mentioned earlier, go ahead and do that now. If you press pause, I promise I'll wait. Once you have ensured that you have the ISOs in question, click on the cog in the top right corner and scroll to image configuration. It should be at the top of the screen. Click upload image. For this part, I like to make sure that my image names match the ISO names exactly. So I scroll right down to the bottom and select upload a file. Click the choose file button and navigate to my ISO image. I'm going to select the vertio ISO first, but I am also going to copy the file name field. Click open and paste the file name in the name field here. I also want to ensure that I select the storage container built earlier in this video. Click Save. Go ahead and repeat that process for the Windows ISO. Now that you have uploaded a Windows ISO and the VertIO ISO, created a storage pool, and configured the networking, we can finally begin to build out our workloads. Back to the dropdown we go. Click VM and pop on over to the table view. Click the Create VM button on the top right to bring up the VM creation dialog box. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to name this VM Windows VM1. I'm going to provide this VM with two vCPU and four gigs of memory. And then from a disk perspective, we're going to mount from clone from image service, our Windows ISO in the first uh, DVD drive. We're going to add an additional CD-ROM drive, clone from image service, and bring those, the Nutanix VertIO driver ISO. And lastly, we're going to add an installation disk, which we're going to allocate on the storage container and make sure we move on down to Scully primary. Uh, I'm only going to provide this with 60 gigs, um, just as a base install. And remember, in AHV, all of that is thin provision, so it will not take up uh, all of that space, uh, unless, of course, you write data to it. Last piece here is adding the network adapter. So we're going to click Add New NIC, Scully Primary. In this case, VLAN ID 2, uh, yours is probably VLAN ID 0 or matches your environmental cheat sheet. We're going to leave the network connection state as connected and click Add. Once we've completed that, naming, 
vCPUs in memory, providing the VertIO ISO drive, the Windows ISO, and the install disk, as well as a NIC, we're able to click Save. And that will generate the virtual machine right here in our VM table. In the VM table, you can select the Windows VM one by clicking on it one time. Scroll down to the table break. Click power on and wait for the launch console button to turn blue. Once it has turned blue, go ahead and click on that to launch a VNC console session to your VM. While this boots, I want to let you know why I chose a Windows VM for this exercise. Nutanix's AHV relies on networking and storage drivers that are not natively installed on a Windows ISO. You will need to add them manually during the installation process. So any of you who have not added the VertIO driver ISO to this VM, please go ahead and do that now. As always, if you pause this video, I promise I'll be right here when you get back. All right, so I'm not going to go through the entire process of deploying a Windows Server 2019 application. I'm not going to log into it afterwards, but I am going to show you how to get to the point where you can add the drivers that I just mentioned. So on the Windows Setup screen, select your native languages and click Next. Um, we are going to click Install Now. I'm going to select Windows Server 2019 Standard Desktop Experience. Accept the terms, which I read through thoroughly. And then Custom Install. And as you can see, we're not seeing the 60 gigabyte drive that I added earlier. So what I want to do is click Load Drivers. I'm going to click Browse. I'm going to expand the Nutanix VertIO uh, driver disk. I'm going to scroll down to Windows Server 2019 because that's the uh, OS that I'm running. Hit the drop down button, AMD64, because I'm running on a 64-bit version of Windows Server 2019. Now I'm going to see the three drivers that I want to add to the Windows Server 2019 uh, virtual machine. So Control A selects all, click next, and then all three of these drivers will upload to my Windows V. Wonderful. Now all of a sudden my drive appears. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that drive zero on allocated space and click Next. Now my Windows installation will take place and we'll fast forward to it running. There you have it folks, your first workload running on AHV with Nutanix Community Edition. Once again, this is your host Brendan Quinn reminding you to lab safe. Don't forget to like and subscribe and look forward to more content on Nutanix Community Edition. Thank you.